Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have some very cool posts. We've got, is it a poster? Is it a playmat? We're going to find out in today's video. So we've got this, but also we have posts from the States. It is a big pack. It's really cool. Um, it's actually going to be hard to show everything now, I realize, with this setup. But I'm going to do my best. I'm actually going to start with this thing in here, this uh, triangular pack. So I'm going to open it up here. Where is my, where are my scissors? And there's actually a story attached to this uh, package. Because in here is a playmat, a magic playmat sent to me by Marco or Mark, actually, I should say. It's an Italian living in London. And what he's done, he's set up this charity project, which is quite special. And this playmat is the main thing of his project because what he's done, he's designed a unique playmat and the proceeds of the playmat, they just go 100% to charity, to a very special cause. And, uh, an old school player, while I'm showing here the playmat, ooh. And an old school magic player named Jorgo, he's a player from, um, from Belgium, actually got into a horrible accident in Bali, ended up in a coma, and um, the old school community uh, tried to gather uh, money for Jorgo because his expenses are going through the roof. And recently, Jorgo has been able, he's still in a coma, unfortunately, but they've been able to transport him from Bali to uh, back to Belgium to reunite him with his family. And uh, his mom, Petra, actually is also an avid Magic the Gathering collector. So it's just great that we've been able to at least help a little bit as an MTG old school community. And I think we're going to keep doing that because there are still a lot of costs that are being made, uh, you know, to help Jorgo recover. And uh, the, the playmat, this playmat that I'm going to unroll now is actually uh, a big part. And you know what? I'm just going to first put it down and I'm going to show it to you properly. But this playmat is part of that project. So Mark started to design and sell this playmat and the proceeds are all going to Jorgo to help Jorgo recover. And uh, I'm just gonna hold it up for you guys. Here you can see the playmat. I mean, this is really, really cool. I'm just gonna stand up for a moment. This is my chair. Look at it. So you can see a little bit of my mat underneath it. It's a pretty big playmat actually. You probably recognize this, right? This is from the game Chandelar, my favorite computer game when it comes to magic. If you want to play magic electronically, I'm not sure why you would want to do that. But if you want to do that, uh, play Chandelar. Just do it. If you don't know the game, just Google it, Chandelar MTG, or YouTube it. There are a lot of YouTubers actually who play Chandelar. It's pretty cool. And I mean, this, this, this brings me back. A lot of decks that I... Design now as well, are kind of based on the Chandelar decks. I just really loved it. There were just a lot of like Timmy decks in Chandelar. Very, very cool. A lot of cool wizards in the game. So this is definitely an epic, epic playmat. And now that I'm talking about it, maybe there are still some mats like this left. If you're interested in it, please leave a comment underneath this video. And then I will reply to your comment and see if I can get you in touch with Mark. Because maybe he's got a few left. And... Remember, all the proceeds, everything that he's earned by selling these mats uh, went 100% to Jorgo, so to charity, to help him recover. And like I said, he's back in Belgium at the moment. He's still, you know, in a very, you know, I'm not, I'm not a doctor, obviously, but he's still in a very bad state, still in a coma. Um, the last news I heard is that they're going to operate on him. So I guess that's good news. Um, and also that he was stable enough to go from Bali to Belgium. So we're just very happy that he's back with his family. Uh, also, I want to let you know, Petra, if you're watching this video, we're still very much thinking about Jorgo and, uh, and praying for him, of course. Uh, but like I said, so, you know, if you're interested in this, Matt, um, leave a comment down below and I'll see if I can get you in touch with uh, Mark, who's the person who designed these mats and produced these mats to support uh, Jorgo's cause, so that's uh, that's fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna just um, gonna set the camera back, and then uh, we're gonna open up the second package in today's mill day video.
Okay, time to open up the second package here on my brand new playmat. I love it. I love it. Looking forward to play with it. Um, but look at this. We got a huge pack. This pack is from Plague Doctor from the United States. Um, if you saw the last Mill Day video, which is a few weeks ago, you saw me actually opening up this uh, revised, repacked starter deck. And I think he sent me a message saying that he wanted to send me another one uh, for my brother, because if you've been following the channel, the reason I started playing Magic, like so many, by the way, is because my elder brother played Magic the Gathering and he got me into the game at a very young age. I was like 11 when I started playing. Um, it was 1995 and all that. And so these starter decks really, really take me back to what it was like. Um, so I'm going to open this up. So I'm expecting to see another starter deck. But as you can see, the package is it's way too big for just one starter deck. So you just never know what Plague Doctor is, is, is gonna send my way. It's, it's always a surprise. I love it. I love surprises, especially when it involves magic. So it's just a lot of fun. Oh, I can feel a t-shirt. I think, I think he told me about this. He's got his own landscaping company and he's made t-shirts. Look at that. We got, <laughs> we got two t-shirts. We got something like cards, I assume. I don't know. Let's have a look. Oh man, that's so funny. So be kind landscaping. Wow, really, really cool. What I'll do, I'll, I'll add some pictures to show you. The, the logo is actually pretty cool. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm just gonna show it to you. I'm moving the camera a lot today. I hope people don't get seasick. Landscaping. So if you ever need landscaping and you're in the area, call this number. Just do it. He's a great guy. He's a magic player. What more can you ask for, really? And I've got also a black version. Yeah, man. That's so funny. I'm just going to walk around. I'm here in Amsterdam based, by the way, if you don't know. So I'm just going to walk around in here and, uh, you know, try to make advertisement for your landscaping company in the States. That's hilarious. Um, and then we've got this. I, I assume, because we had some contact over the, the Discord, Timmy Talks Discord. So I assume that this is maybe some more cards uh, for my brother, a starter deck. It says, look, it says Merfolk. So that's interesting. It's got a lot of tape on it. You know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ruin the box. I've got extra of these boxes if I need one. Oh, I can peek inside. Oh, that's sweet. Look at this. I know this is another, just these boxes alone for me are pretty amazing. And I mean, you're you're so generous with it, Plague Doctor. I'm sure you know as well that these are now also valuable. Like everything old school is valuable. Even the packaging, even just the booster packs. Okay, there's another note. Timmy, what's a revised starter without? Ooh, what else? What else is there on the note? Without extra to land out Plague Doctor. I mean, I agree. Basically, you need two starter decks to play mano a mano. So, uh, so we've got the starter deck. And I mean, last time you actually wrapped it. So it kind of gave that, oh, you've done it again. <laughs> Look at it. I love it. It gives you kind of that feel, right? So I know that the starter decks that Plague Doctor makes are based on real starter decks and real openings, I believe. So um, he's compiled them exactly the way that some of the OG starter decks from revised were compiled. So this is really a duplicate of that. So I'm gonna open this in a moment. I'm gonna take my time for it. There are also some loose cards here. I remember talking about this. So as you know, I have a revised collection. I've collected the set times four, except for the restricted cards. So I can just make any possible deck with revised cards, whatever I want, um, which is amazing. I mean, revised is my alpha, it's a, the set that I started with, but some of the cards are in pretty rough shape. And um, Plague Doctor told me that he had some cards still left over and he wanted to send them to me. So obviously, you know, he's an extremely generous individual, just amazing. Look at the quality of these cards. I'm actually gonna send you something special back to Plague Doctor, but I don't wanna show it now to you guys because um, I don't want to ruin the surprise. But we've got a, a Northern Paladin. We've got a uh, Conversion, which is pretty uh, pretty special in Shaman. All mountains are considered basic planes 
while the conversion is in play and you can pay two white during your upkeep or conversion is discarded. This is a card nobody plays, but how cool would this be? And how does this work with Blood Moon? So this is a question for you guys. How does this work with Blood Moon? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, Magical Hack, I love this card. I'm a big Studio Ghibli fan, if you know what that is. Um, it's an animation studio from Japan. They make fantastic uh, movies that I, that I love to watch still as a kid, but I still love to watch them now. And Magical Hack kind of reminds me of that style. And also what the card does, it kind of breaks through the barriers and magic, right? So it's an interrupt that reads, change the text of any card being played or already in play by replacing one basic land type with another. For example, you can change Swamp Walk to Planeswalk. Or you can change mountains to swamps or whatever, you know, whatever you want. Actually, it goes together quite well with conversion. That's a cool, that's some cool uh, synergy there. Okay, we've got Island Fish Jess Konikas. Yeah, this is actually the reason I fell in love with blue was never the counter magic or the pure strength of the color. It was more like cool creatures like this, like the Island Fish. I know it's seven, it's a six, eight, summon Island Fish. And then you got to pay three blue during your upkeep phase to untap the fish or else it doesn't untap. And also it's got this thing called Island Home, right? Just like the pirate ship. It cannot do anything if you don't have any islands. It cannot attack if your opponent doesn't have any islands. I mean, there are so many downsides to this card. And just because it's a six, eight, it really shows the power level of old school. And actually this card was already bad back in the day, it it's never been good. And I kind of feel from a design perspective, I kind of regret that because I love the art. It's like it has a tropical island on its fishy back, right? It's super cool. Um, when you see this, you wanna play with it, no matter how bad it is. I mean, that's the Timmy side of you, right? You wanna play this card and you wanna make it work. I just wish the card, you know, would maybe be an eight, eight, what if island walk? And then it can still have the three blue, during the upkeep, because they're in some weird scenarios, for example, when you build a deck with Meekstone, uh, it could even be beneficial for you to have the three blue to untap. You know, it doesn't have to be a bad thing, but I think just the island home is a little bit too much. It's making it a little bit too big. I think if, if it would be six mana, eight, eight, island walk, and the upkeep cost, yeah, that would make it a lot more playable, but that's just me. I like to see, like when a card is cool art, I always hope that I can make it somehow playable. Uh, we've got a Bok Wreath, so one black and three for a three, three Swamp Walker. Great with uh, Cursed Land, or not Cursed Land. Um, oh man, I forgot the name now. Um, one black Enchant Land turns it into a Swamp. I play with it in my zombie deck for some reason, I forgot the name now, but um, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. A Scavenging Ghoul. Now, Scavenging Ghoul, ghoul is a cool card. It's actually now a zombie, so it's been updated, a creature type. It's no longer a ghoul, it's a zombie, so you can put it in your zombie deck. Uh, and at the end of each turn, put one counter on the ghoul for each other creature that was placed in the graveyard during the turn. And you can use that counter to regenerate the scavenging ghoul. So actually this card um, works quite well with an Evan Earl's disc. What you can do, if you have this in your zombie deck, right? And you don't have the zombie master out to give a regeneration, you can first use, for example, the disc, kill a lot of creatures, then play out the scavenging ghoul. And then at the end of the turn, it gets a counter for all the creatures that were destroyed even though it wasn't in the game when that happened. You know, I love these cards because it's like they they trick the rules of magic, which I find fascinating. Ah, oh, demonic hordes. And look, by the way, how, what an incredible condition these cards are in. It's just, it's amazing. Um, demonic hordes, as a kid, you know, this was one of my favorite cards, even though I didn't play with black. For me, it was a reason to almost start playing with black but yeah, I, I didn't have any of these very powerful cards anyway, but these were three black and three for a five, five, tap, destroy one land. Just read that first part, tap, destroy one land. That's all you need to know, it's beautiful. Ah, oh, demonic hordes. And also the art of, of Mirror Force. Look at it, amazing, amazing, amazing. Goblin Balloon Brigade, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love the flavor text. I actually put this on the YouTube community page of the channel not too long ago. I've got this new thing going on where I share flavor text of a card and I give you three options. It's kind of like a quiz. Uh, and I ask, okay, what with what flavor text does, does this card match? Um, you know, let, let me know, by the way, if you like that and I'll, I'll keep doing it. Uh, I get, get a lot of people voting, like four or 500 people vote on these things all the time. So I guess I guess they like it. I, I always like stuff like that. Anyway, Goblin Bloom Brigade, a 1-1. And for one red, you can give it flying. The cool thing is um, in the alpha ability, uh, you can just give everything 
you can just give everything flying with it, you know, because of the wording in alpha, which is pretty cool. Um, ooh, power search. If you're playing with mana burn, you want to want to play with power search. Then we've got mana barbs, which is the opposite of power search. So if you have both of these cards, you can build a nasty deck. I'm actually not gonna read all the cards to you guys because they're they're just quite a lot, and I also want to open up our, our starter deck here. Uh, but wow, yeah, Earthbind. The art alone, do I need to say more? You know, do I need to say more? I don't think so. Just have a look. Beautiful art. Uh, Quentin Hoover, obviously. And this is a hippie killer right here. This is my favorite way to kill a hippie. If you kill a hippie like this, it's style, style points. You know, if you use a bolt, everybody can do that. Everybody who plays red's got four bolt. But play Earthbind, then you're a big boy, at least in my book. Or a big girl, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um... Earthquake, wow, loving the synergy. Earth bind, earthquake. And then we've got Stream of Life. Iron Root, Tree Folk. I actually cast this card for four in a game a couple of months ago. I still feel bad about that. It's five, it's not four. Four will make it a lot better, by the way. It's a three, five vanilla. Oh, Living Lands, love the art. I mean, the problem with Living Lands is that, you know, in Legends, the set that one of the expansion sets, uh, that came after, of course, the Alpha Beta Unlimited. Um, you got Living Plane, which is just a better card, right? You can do a lot more with that. But still, Living Lands is cool. It turns all forests into one ones. Living Artifact, pretty nice. And then Enchantress deck, maybe. Elvish Archer, this art by Anson Maddox. Absolutely epic. I think Anson is one of the most versatile artists. If you check out his art and magic, he's got so many different styles. I just love the movement here in the cart. You know, he's ready. He's ready to, to aim his bow and arrow. Beautiful. Oh, force of nature. So we talked about Island Fish just going because being kind of unplayable. And then we've got the force, which I think personally is personally uh, really well balanced. You know, it's six mana for an eight, eight with trample. And then yes, you also got to pay the four during your upkeep or the force deals damage to you, but then it doesn't tap itself. So you can still attack with it. I think it's a really nice balance. There's no connection with if your opponent doesn't have any forests, cannot attack. No, it can just always attack. I think it's a really good card. The problem with this card is Maze of If. That is one of the problems. So if you play this in old school, make sure you have some land removal to deal with the Mazes of If. Blood Moon does wonders, but also just a Stone Rain, Ice Storm if you want to keep it mono green. There are a lot of ways to get rid of lands, but if you play Force, I would advise you to also play with land removal. Then we've got Cockatrice, really nice. I always felt like this kind of a small chicken on a parking lot because of the background here. <laughs> and then I started reading about, this This was a while ago when I was a little Timmy, about what is a Cockatrice. And I was like, oh, there's actually a magical or mythical creature that's quite big. But I think even though the art is really cool, there, there's nothing to reference it by. There's no scale, right? If, if there would have been something here to show how big it is, like a building, for example, I think that would have given the cockatrice some more stature. It is a pretty good card, by the way, in my book, right? It's kind of a thicket, well, it is a thicket basilisk, but then it flies, so it's like a really good wall. Uh, oh, I love the art of this, and love the flavor text of the Obsidian's Golem as well. This is really funny. The Song of the Artificer. If you've got time, check it out. Pause it here and read the flavor text. It's really quite nice. Then we've got the Wooden Sphere. I mean, these are cards that really we used to play with. We used to play with these cards. And we would sit at a table with like six people at our LGS. It was called the Magic Wombat. Unfortunately, it's no longer there. But we played these huge long games. And these cards were played a lot because it gave you this feeling, even if you weren't playing green yourself, you could gain life if your opponent cast a card. And that was like really cool. Ha <laughs> ha, you do something and I actually, uh, you know, have an upside because you do that. So I'm kind of mastering your magic. Really, really funny. And then life was regarded much more valuable uh, than it is now. And then we've got oh, Ivory Tower. Very, very, very good card. O original, of course, from Antiquities. Reprint in Revised. Very, very good card. Then we've got Glasses of Earth, a card that I think should see more play. It already sees a little bit of play in Atok decks. Maybe I should play it in Timmy's Spellbook because it's such a good combination with Counter Magic. Really, really good. Um, and then we've got, ah, oh, Winter Orb. Wow. And remember these cards, guys. 
Ah, the quality is so, so good. Thank you so much, Plague Doctor. These are all going to go into my uh, revised collection. Beautiful, beautiful cards. Uh, Winter Orb is really a great way to lose friends. People with Winter Orb decks or decks with stasis or stuff like that, <laughs> they really weren't popular back in the day. Now that I play old school again, you know, in this, in this kind of modern meta with all the knowledge we have today, I have much more appreciation for these cards and I actually play with Winter Orb myself as well in a couple of decks. Howling Mind. Well, talking about talking about Wingtorp and Howling Mind, these are the only two artifacts in the game of Magic that you can deactivate by tapping them. So if you combine these two with Rally Barrier, I've mentioned that tons of times before on the channel, so everybody knows that secret tech already. But if you tap them down with an Icy Manipulator, Relic Barrier, or you know a Twiddle, use a Twiddle, then they don't work anymore. You know. So for example, with Howling Mind, you draw two cards, you tap your mind, and then your opponent only draws one card so you know that's a huge upside okay so these are the revised cards that uh were in this mail there from play doctor uh thank you so much for that you're way 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 too generous there's something cool coming your way i promise you that um but now we are ready to open up this booster before we do though i'm gonna take a little little zip of water you know and uh, and i'll be right back Okay, so I had some water and I'm back. Mmm. I mean, what a mail day, right? It's just amazing. All these beautiful, I can't wait to add them to my collection. But first things first, we're gonna open this booster pack. We're gonna relive the moments. And this is actually you, if you're watching, this is your starter deck. So we're gonna do a battle. And um, also there will be recordings of it on the channel. I don't know when. I mean, there are so many cool recordings of matches I still got to show on Timmy Talk, so I don't know when, but it will happen. So first of all, um, yeah, again, he's put a guide in here. Wow. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. So we've got, I mean, this is just, a, just this booklet, just a booklet alone, you know, has collectors, magic collectors are crazy. And the, the quality, the state this book is in, it's like excellent condition, mint condition. It's amazing. The box is in an amazing state. I'm just going to try to keep everything together. Um, these are the uncommons, which are here. And we know that the first card is this ivory cup. So I'm just going to put that here. We're going to do that later. Then I've got the cards. Now I know that these three cards should be the rares of the pack, right? If I remember correctly. So that means that this should be a common. So I'm just going to check it out. Hopefully it's not a rare. Yeah, this is a common, so that's good tranquility. I'm going to flip the uh, the pile. Exactly. Now, this is a common as well. Spell Blast. And then we've got Fire Breathing. And then we've got a Mountain. Now, remember, these starter decks were a great way to actually get basic lands. It was difficult to get basic lands back in the day. Then we've got a Circle of Protection White. Scave Zombies. Disintegrate, Mesa Pegasus, a Swamp, a Herloon Minotaur, a Plains, a Terror, love the art of this, a Mountain, a Holy Armor, a Paralyze, a Creature Bond, a Mountain, a Plains, a Grizzly Bears, a fireball. That's a that's a good one. That's a good common to get. A circle of protection blue. An island. A mons goblin raiders. Guardian angel. Reconstruction. A mountain. A plains. Another mountain. A swamp. A forest. A healing staff. A Drudge Skeleton, Script Sprites, A Plains, Unholy Strength with the Pentagram. Ooh, that was taken away, right, in 4th edition. Lana or Elves, ah, oh, that's a really good card. Wild Growth, so there's some ramp in this uh, starter deck. A Jump, an Atox, so that goes really well with, for example, a Glass of Urza, but also with the uh, Ivory Cup, actually. A forest, an island, 
Oh, Timmy, he's got a Timmy. Oh, it's actually really good if you go starter deck versus starter deck because there are always a lot of one ones in there. So t Timmy is really good. An Iron Root Tree Folk, also a solid card. Like it's hard to deal with the card with five toughness. And a Red Elemental Blast. Oh, and one last card, a Mountain. Okay, so these are the commons, right? So these are the commons in the in the pack. And then we've got the uncommons. So we have the Ivory Cup, right? One to cast for an artifact. Tap one, any white spell cast gives you a life. You can only do that once. And then we've got a Wall of Bone. So one for Wall of Regeneration, really, really good. A Conversion. So the card we actually talked about, two white and two, changes mountains into basic planes. Oh, Earth Elemental. Like big creatures are really good in like a limited format. Then we've got a castle. Again, I think it's kind of useful. Animate Debt. That is a good card. One black and one. You can get any creature from any graveyard. Enchant Debt Creature. How cool is that? Enchant Debt Creature, right? And that creature comes back onto the battlefield and it's yours. You know, it's in your possession. We've got a White Ward. Evil Presence. That is the name that I was thinking about when I talked about Bok Reith. You know, combine it with Evil Presence. That's really good. Then we've got a forest, a throne of bone. I love the art of this. So he's got an ivory cup and a throne of bone. And he's got that Atok, right? So that's actually pretty good. Uh, and then we see Obsanius Golem, four, six again, to deal with six toughness, like five toughness is difficult, but six, it's almost impossible. Sangir Vampire, wow, that is a solid hit. This is actually a pretty decent booster. To, uh, to play with. And then we've got the uncommons. Okay, uncommon. Oh, sorry, the rares, of course. The rares. Rare one. Clockwork Beast. So this is truly a beast, right? It comes to play with seven plus one plus oh counter. So this is a seven four. Seven power for six mana. That is decent in old school, you know? So that's rare number one. Rare number two. Boom. Veteran Bodyguard. Oh, that's so cool. Veteran Bodyguard used to be one of the favorite cards of my brother. He had this deck with Castle and Veteran Bodyguard, which actually both in this booster pack, and he would be invincible. So Veteran Bodyguard, two white and three for a two five. Um, actually, the art is based on Lou Ferrango, I believe, who played the Hulk back in the day. And what it does, let's just read it, right? Unless Bodyguard is tapped, any damage done to you by unblocked creatures is done instead to the Bodyguard. You may not take this damage yourself, though you can prevent it if possible. No more than one bodyguard of your choice can take damage for you in this manner each turn. So, you know, to make a long story short, if he attacks with creatures and you don't block, the bodyguard takes all the damage. So if you combine this with like a holy armor on the bodyguard or just a lot of castles, make the toughness really big, it's going to be really difficult for your opponent to kill you with combat damage. Of course, you can still kill your opponent with all types of other ways and you can also just destroy the bodyguard. But... The idea is really, really cool. And also I love the fact that this card hasn't been reprinted in 4th edition. It's one of those cards that, you know, wasn't reprinted after Revice, which always gives me a special feeling, you know, since, since um, you know, Revice is my alpha set. Anyway, we've got one last rare to go. We already saw it was a blue one. Let me check. Douglas Schuler. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, your opponent's mana. Oh, um, um, mana drain. What's it called again, the card? Mana short? Yeah, mana drain. No, drain power. Mana drain, of course, the counter spell. I'm a little bit bad with, with names today in this video. Sorry, guys. Uh, drain power, the Elvis of the set. The female Elvis, that is. Uh, two blue for a sorcery. Opponent must draw all mana from his or her available lands. This mana and all mana in opponent's mana pool drains into your mana pool. You can't take less than all your opponent's mana. So again, if you're playing with Mana Burn, this is a risky card. It is a really cool card if you're playing, for example, with uh, with Winter Orb, or if your opponent has a counter deck, you know, then you're going to make sure that they first tap out all their lands. And then after that, you're going to play your big spell that you don't want to be countered. Also, it's great, of course, that you can use all the mana to maybe play out a huge fireball or just a really big creature. I think it's a really cool card. Unfortunately, if you're playing a format without mana burn, your opponent can simply tap out and not make use of the mana. So, you know, that makes it a little, a little bit less good. If you're playing a format with mana burn, your opponent will get punished for doing that. At least they take one damage a piece. 
but still it's a pretty good card well not good but it's a useful card in certain circumstances because you're forcing your opponent to tap out so you know then your opponent still cannot counter anything cannot do anything else it's always just great to play against a tapped out opponent because you know that he or she cannot do anything in your turn you know at least no things that cost mana and in old school it basically means that they cannot play out anything in their hands you know um anyway this is uh the booster or the starter deck i should say uh that plague doctor sent me so this is going to go to my brother we're going to have some duels and uh plague doctor thank you so much for all the beautiful cards and also a big shout out to mark uh you know for everything that you've done just have another look at your amazing play mat uh, it's it's so good and just that you've done all that to help Yorho, you know I just think it's great to see how much we have done as an old school community community to support you know one of our own um, who, who needs our help and probably still needs our help so if you're interested in these play mats if you want one please leave a message in the comments below and I'll see what I can do for you I don't even know if Mark still has any but you know, leave a comment. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get you in touch and I'll try to see what I can do. For now, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.